Well, hey folks, welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. It is winter here, uh, and this year it has been uh, quite an interesting winter. Uh, we got a lot more snow than we have in the last few years. Uh, we got about 16 inches, about 18 inches total uh, over this winter and several storms. Been a pretty good uh, winter for snow here. Uh, and we actually need it because I live in an area that is one of those areas that has been in a drought condition. So we're happy to get the snow. Now, today in this video, I'm going to be talking about propane, uh, specifically uh, propane tanks that we use for like off-grid living. You also see these tanks on RVs, campers, and used for barbecues. Now these propane tanks come in various. Now these propane tanks come in various sizes. Uh, you can get the little teeny ones uh, that are used for like the uh, portable barbecues that you just screw onto the uh, regulator, or you can get the uh, one pound, the the uh, five gallon, the uh, ten gallon, and and on up. Now this is a thirty pound tank. Now a thirty pound tank means that the, the tank by itself weighs about twenty five pounds. Uh, they put about 30 pounds of propane in it, uh, and that's why they call these a 30-pound tank. This is a common size uh, used on RVs and also used for places like my uh, off-grid cabin here. Now, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks uh, for uh, using these uh, propane tanks, and it's some things that I actually didn't know about propane. Uh, and I've lived off-grid now for over 20 years. I've been using propane for many, many years. I thought I knew pretty much everything there was to know about propane. Turns out I wasn't near as smart as I thought I was. There were some things I still had to learn. So if I can pass those tips on to you, maybe you can avoid some of the problems that I've had. Now, one of the problems that I had recently was with this tank here. I went to open it up, and I hurried and cranked it open, and nothing came out of the flow. I wasn't getting any propane out of my hose, and I couldn't figure it out. I cranked it back down, cranked it back up, nothing. I wasn't getting any, any propane out of here. So I took the tank down to the propane guy, and I said, well, what's wrong? Is this valve messed up? And he says... No, shut it down. He says, and here's the number one tip. He says, these things are not like the old valves where you want to crank them hard open or crank them uh, hard shut, and you don't want to open them up too fast. So that's the number one tip. Now, these valves that are on these tanks, which I'm going to talk about on this new one, uh, this, this is called an OPD, which stands for Overfill Protection Device. That's called an OPD valve. And as you can see here, that's the shape of the, the valve, okay? This is on all new tanks that you buy, and if you've got some of the older tanks with the older type of valves, you're going to have to replace it with the OPD valves in order to get them filled. Most propane places won't even touch them unless they have the OPD valve installed. New tanks have the OPD valve installed. Now, on these OPD valves, they actually have a vent, and they're designed to prevent these from being used in a tipped situation, like this is tipped here. They're designed so that they uh, are less likely to leak, and uh, so they work in, in all situations to be a little bit safer. So that's why they change these valves out. Uh, and so you, you're going to have an OPD valve. Now, these OPD valves, you actually want to be gentle with them. And that's what I didn't know because I'm, I'm an old schooler. When you open a valve, you open it up all the way if you want to get everything out of it. And if you close it down, you want to make sure it's closed, you crank it down. Well, don't do that with these valves because you can actually damage uh, the seal that's inside there. And so then, then they get blocked, and that's what happened with mine. I just happened to get it cranked down. When I cranked it down, I cranked it down too tight, and so I had, had set the seal so that it wouldn't open back up. So when you open these, that's the number one tip. Do it very gently. Just open it up a couple of turns. You don't have to open it up all the way. You don't have to crank it open. And when you close it, just close it down very gently with a couple of turns. That's enough until it stops, okay? And then you can, and same thing with your... Uh, regulator which I'll show you here I just happen to have an extra regulator uh, on your regulator the same thing you don't have to over crank these regulators and that was a mistake that I used to make too uh, the regulator when it goes on the tank is make sure that you just put it on and then just give it some some gentle turns make sure it's on and seated correctly and then just give it some gentle turns until it seats okay and then that will seat in there you don't have to crank it down real tight because then you'll you can uh, mess up the valve inside there. Okay, so don't crank it down real tight. Just tighten it up until it's just finger tight. That's all you need to do, and that's tight. Okay, so OPD valves on your tanks. Understand how they work. They have a uh, vent system on the back here. That's in case the pressure, because these are pressurized tanks, which I'll talk about here in a minute. If there's too much pressure in the tank, this has a relief valve so it can relief, relief some of that pressure off to keep the, the pressure correct. 
And uh, when tanks get hot, and I'm going to talk about this more, when tanks get hot or very cold, the pressure inside the ch tank changes. So let me explain how propane works. First, uh, propane is a byproduct of natural gas and oil drilling. Nobody drills for propane. So let's get that straight. Uh, some people are concerned, well, it's, you know, it's damaging the environment and things like that. Okay, let me explain something. Uh, propane is considered a byproduct and is considered a green fuel, okay, because it burns extremely efficiently. In fact, in most newer appliances, they get up to 99.7% efficiency. Uh, that's almost as high as an electric heater, which is 100% efficient. Propane is a very efficient gas. Nobody drills for propane, and if we didn't use propane, they would have to flare it off, and I'll show you what that looks like when they flare it off at the gas plant. Okay, so that's what they would have to do if we didn't use propane. Propane is a green fuel used by a lot of people that are using their RVs, off-grid cabins, and things like that, because it is considered a green fuel, and is, it is also generally less expensive to use uh, than natural gas because it has twice the uh, energy density as natural gas. So even though you can buy a gallon of natural gas cheaper than you can a gallon of propane, that gallon of propane has twice as much energy density in it, so you're going to get twice as much uh, fuel use, uh, heat or whatever, however you're using it, out of propane than you would out of natural gas. And because of the rising prices of electricity, unless you have a huge solar power system, which I don't have here at my house, my, my system is only 800 watts, uh, most people are on grid, and if you're using uh, electric from the grid, electrical appliances, electrical furnaces and that, cost a lot more to run than it does to run propane appliances. Now, some people are also concerned right now about uh, the possibility that they may start banning natural gas appliances. That is a possibility. The reason is a lot of those appliances were never approved under the Energy Star Efficiency Program, which started way back, I don't know, 30 years or so ago. They started the Energy Efficiency Program in which they rated appliances, and in order to be an Energy Star efficient appliance, they had to have at least 90% efficiency. Well, most natural gas appliances, except for a few of the newer furnaces out there, uh, are only about 70% efficient especially things like uh, natural gas cook stove, cooktops and things like that, furnaces or ovens, they're, they're just not that efficient. And they, reduce, they produce nitrous oxide, which is a very harmful gas, especially for kids. It, it causes all kinds of problems, can cause asthma. And, you know, if you're living in a, a house that's trapping that gas, it's really dangerous. Propane burns at 99.7% efficient. And so it's a much cleaner fuel. Uh, it's a much safer fuel for your families. It's also cheaper in most places than natural gas or electricity. So that's why a lot of people use uh, propane. Now, propane in your tanks like these, they call this propane, but its terminology is actually LPG, which stands for liquid petroleum gas. It does come from liquid product, uh, from uh, petroleum products, which is your either your natural gas or your oil uh, distributing uh, when they refine it, they turn it into propane, but it is a, a liquid. So inside this tank is liquid propane. Now, people say, well, how do you turn liquid into a gas like that? Well, liquid propane uh, boils at a very low, low temperature. In fact, it will stay liquid up until minus 40 degrees. Below 40 degrees, it can actually freeze just like water can. Above 40, minus 40 degrees, it will actually boil inside the tank, releasing the gas when you open the valve. And that's how it converts this into gas, because the ambient temperature, the temperature that's outside in the environment, is warmer than the liquid propane that's inside the tank. So when you open up the valve, it causes that reaction, it causes that liquid propane to start to boil and release the gas up through the valve, and that's what goes through your... Uh, pipes into your appliances. Interesting, okay? And so it is an actual liquid uh, that's inside your tank. Now, like I said, this is a 30-pound tank. Uh, they also call these a seven-gallon tank because what you get is when you fill these up, if they're filled from the empty, you're going to get about seven gallons of liquid propane. Now, it's important to know that you don't want to overfill these propane tanks. I know everybody wants, like, especially in winter, let's get everything filled up all the way because we want to make sure we got enough. You do not want to overfill these tanks. They're designed to hold seven gallons. Might be just a little bit less, might be just a little bit more, but right around seven gallons. And that leaves enough room also in the tank 
uh, for expansion. And these tanks will expand in summertime. Uh, the the heat in, uh, of the ex outside temperature can cause these tanks to expand. Sometimes they may relief, release a little bit of off-gassing as a result of that. In wintertime, that tends to contract. And what can happen in wintertime is uh, if it gets really cold, the propane can contract enough that you actually lose some pressure in the tanks. That happens more with the very large tanks. Now, some people have installed tanks at their houses. 100, 200, 500 gallon tanks in their house. And in wintertime, they will wonder why their appliances may not be running quite right if it gets really cold. Well, that's because the, the propane contracted because of the cold weather. You lose some pressure. And then as you're using your propane, if you start getting low on your propane, it doesn't have enough pressure in those tanks in order to keep your appliances running in the house. So another tip, if you're using those very large tanks uh, and it's very cold winter, uh, make sure that you are refilling your tanks when they get to down to about 50%. A full tank has less problems with contraction and so you won't, and also less problems with moisture development in your tanks, and so your appliance will, will have enough pressure in order to keep running. Smaller tanks like this, generally not a problem. However, any propane tank, and I've had this happen to me, any propane tank can uh, have a problem with condensation and frosting of the valves and on the uh, regulator. And what happens is, because I said, uh, propane is a lot colder than the outside environment. When you release it, when you release propane through the valve and through the regulator, what happens is it, the moisture that's in the air, which is warmer, will condense and cause frost and can freeze up on the, reg on the uh, regulator and on the valves. Now, the way to do that it usually is move it to a warmer place if you can. Put two tanks right next to each other. That creates thermal mass. Or you can cover them with a blanket. Uh, and in some cases, if it's really, really cold and a problem, they do make thermal blankets and even electric blankets that you can put over your tanks to keep them warm. I've never had that problem here. But before I built my solarium, which you can see I'm standing in right here, every winter I wrap my porch in plastic. Well, the reason for doing that is I keep my propane tanks on my porch inside here that goes into the regulator into the cabin. And the reason for that is if, if the propane tanks are kept warmer in winter, then I won't have the frost issues uh, freezing up the valve and freezing up the regulator. Okay, but you can do the same thing if your propane tank, propane tanks have to be stored outside. Even on my porch here, this is ventilated, so I'm not worried about trapping the propane if it does happen to leak. But even if you uh, have your propane out, tanks outside, you can put a blanket over them. I would not wrap them real tight because this has a vent hole in it. You want to make sure you keep the vent holes uh, open in case they do release. Oh, uh, some propane, but you can wrap a blanket over them. You could put a piece of plastic over that if you need to. Uh, you can even create a small greenhouse if you need to uh, over your tanks to get, help keep them warm. Uh, and then you won't have the problems with frost uh, and freezing up your valves. All right. This is the new tank that I got. When this one uh, wasn't working for me, I went ahead and ordered another tank. I have four of these. Now, this tank is over 30 years old. This actually comes off a 1964 uh, Rambler camper that I got. And I got rid of the camper because I sold it off, but I kept the tanks. And these tanks, after 30 years, what's that now, 40 years, 50 years, uh, these tanks are still working just great. I get them refilled all the time at the propane place. I did have to change them out for the OPD valves when I got them, but these tanks still work great. And once he explained the situation on the valve to me so I'd stop cranking on it so much, this tank is still working perfectly. But I did go ahead and order me another one. That way I have an extra as a backup just in case I ever get down to my last tank and something goes wrong with it. I keep this one as my spare uh, just-in-case tank. And this is made by Flame King. It is a 30-pound tank. Uh, you can get them uh, at your propane dealers. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on Walmart. Uh, very well-made tanks. Uh, they are steel. They come with the OPD valve. I looked at them, and the weld is extremely good. Very good weld and uh, uh, very excellent tanks at a decent price. One of these tanks like this, a seven-gallon tank or a 30-pound tank, will last me one week, and that is for uh, my heater, which is a uh, propane uh, vent-free uh, Dynaglow heater, and I've done videos on that. You can go watch. Uh, that will run. This will run my heater in the cabin all winter, and it runs it. Uh, one tank will run it for a week. Uh, and also runs my uh, cook stove, which is propane, so for cooking, and also runs my on-demand water heater, which is an EcoTemp uh, water heater. So one tank does a lot for me. It takes care of my heating, it takes care of my cooking, and it takes care of my OD water heater.
per week off of one tank. I've got five of these now. I had four. I've got five of these now. So I have four, and I just change. When I get down to uh, one tank on, I take three down and refill them once a month uh, at the propane place. And that way, I've always got propane. I've always got one full tank on, three, po three propane tanks that I go and refill and keep them uh, ready to go. All right, I hope this helps you uh, understanding propane tanks. I know a lot of off-gridders and a lot of RVers, a lot of people that use them for their barbecues and that have some of those questions about those valves. Uh, again, just a quick walkthrough. Don't overcrank your valves, okay? Um, be, make sure that your tanks are sitting level. That's one thing I didn't mention because OPD valves are designed so that if the tank is sitting crooked, they won't work because what can happen is the liquid propane, remember this is liquid, can actually leak from a, a tip tank. It can leak into the reg regulator valve and that liquid propane can freeze in there or possibly uh, cause or possibly cause some other problems. So these OPD valves are designed so they won't work if you have the tank so it's not sitting level. So make sure your tanks are sitting level. On the big tanks, remember, fill them up above 50%. Uh, and uh, try to keep your tanks in some place where they can get some sunshine during the daytime. Keep two tanks close together. Build yourself a solarium or cover them with a blanket or like something like that in winter uh, to keep the valves and the regulators uh, working. All right, folks. Have a great day.